Hi, my name is Sienna Marin, and I'm going to teach you about Robert Owen and the New Lone Ark. First, a bit of background on Robert Owen. Robert Owen was born in Newtown, Wales, and was the sixth out of seven children in his family. He was born to be a local settler and ironmonger, but began in the textile in industry at the age of 10 years old. From a young age, he displayed strong entrepreneurial spirit and creativity, strong management skills, and progressive morals, which we will see in his later workings as he grows. In 1773, he was elected to be a member of the Manchester Literary and Philosophical Society, as well as he also became a committee member of the Manchester Board of Health, which was set up to promote improvements in the health and working conditions of factory workers. He was also married to Caroline Dale in 1799 and formed a partnership with her father's mill in New Lanark, which led to his eventual running of New Lanark. And lastly, he has utopian socialist ideals, which we'll be able to see in his later workings. David Dale is the father of Caroline Dale, Robert Owen's wife, and a member of Glasgow's entrepreneurial elite and a very successful businessman. Within his time in New Lanark, David Dale built four large mills and solid store housing for mill workers. He also was able to form the largest cotton manufacturing establishment in Scotland with live working communities. Cotton continued to be spun there for almost 200 years since he began the working. David Dale was also seen to be a very enlightened employer as he prioritized the education and welfare of his workers. As explained earlier, the deal made between Robert Owen and David Dell led to the New, um, New Lanark Mills being sold to Robert Owen in 1799. Moving on to New Lanark, New Lanark is a village on River Clyde near Lanark in Lanarkshire. In 1784, when David Dale ran the mills, he began a plan to found cotton mills pow powered by natural energy from the Falls of Clyde in Lanarkshire. Through this, as well as Robert Owen's work, New Lanark became a successful business and an example of urban planning, as well as an example of modern theories relating to human resource management and ethical business practices. With the use of Robert Owen's new management, the cotton mills and village of New Lanark became a model community, which promoted progress and prosperity through the new technology of the Industrial Revolution, while also keeping a caring and humane regime. There was also a large amount of workplace, educational, and social reforms that were put in place. New Lanark had the first infant school in the world and created programs for working mothers, free medical care, and a comprehensive education system for children, including evening classes for adults. Within the community, there was also a large amount of le uh, leisure and recreational opportunities, such as concerts, dancing, music making and pleasant landscaped areas for the benefit of the community. It was very common for children from the age five or six years old to be employed through contracts with the poor house and working 15 hours per day. Owens did not like this and immediately withdrew from accepting any further children from the poor house and raised the minimum age of employment to 10 years old. He also banned the beating of children within his establishments. All social improvements at New Lanark were funded through the profit, profits of the factory. To achieve this, he required, um, he required improved productivity from his workforce through changes in the working practices and methods of the factory. The factory at New Lanark was incredibly profitable and ret with returns of over 50% on investment. And Owen used this as a way to prove his theories. Strengthened by his profitability, he tried to persuade other manufacturers to follow his example in employment practices. This was his uh, first attempted uh, through those who influenced, uh, those of influence who visited New Lanark. And then in 1815, when he tried to introduce a bill to legislate on working conditions in factories. The aim of this bill was to ban the employment of those under 10 years old, ban night shifts for all children, provide 30 minutes education a day for those under 18 and to limit the working day to 10 and a half hours. Um, next is educational reforms. 
These centerpieces of Owen's experiment at New Lanark were his Institute for the Formation of Character, finished in 1816, along with his companion building, the School for Children. Owens believed that every person had the right to an education and recreation, and these buildings were used for this purpose. Under Owens' management, children who would previously have worked at mills were sent to school and received structured full-time education. No child under 10 years old was allowed to work at the mills. As soon as village children could walk, they were taken, uh, taken to a nursery where they were looked after by young village girls. This meaning that their mothers could go back to work and make money. And this process effectively formed um, the world's first nursery. Owens expected lessons and the teaching environment within the schools to be interesting and stimulating. Music and dancing also played an important role in the curriculum, which was also extremely varied and included nature studies, history, geography, and art, as well as reading, writing, and arithmetic studies. In addition to workplace reforms, Owens also aimed to improve the living conditions of his workers and promote a sense of community responsibility that made the village a happy and peaceful place to live. He implemented a series of strict rules for residents to abide by, including that all be temperate in the use of liquors, that parents be answerable to, um, for the conduct of their children and householders for their lodgers, that every inhabitant, whether man, woman, or child above the age of 10 capable of working be actively engaged in some legal or useful employment. Neighborhoods were organized into 12 divisions, each with an elected spokesperson who formed a community council that met with Owen to, di uh, to discuss village affairs and any disputes that came up. Owens employed village doctors and operated a sickness fund to which each worker contributed 1 16th of their wages and from which they could draw payments if unable to work through illness. He believed that health could generally be improved by a clean living environment and that fresh air was enough to keep people healthy. Outside of New Lanark, Owens had a large impact on tons of other societies. In Owens' report to the county of Lanark in 1820, Owens stated that um, that reform was not sufficient for the transportation of social order. His proposals for communities brought in younger workers who were under the factory system. And between 1820 and 1830, numerous societies were formed and advocated for his philosophy. The growth of labor unionism and the emergence of working class point of view caused Owen's views to be accepted as expressions of the workers' aspirations, and people began regarding him as their leader. Owen and his followers carried propaganda all over the country and resulted in the transformation of the new National Operative Building Union into a guild and the establishment of the Grand National Consolidated Trades Union. There was a large amount of opposition to this by employers and severe repercussions from the government. Eventually, courts ended, up, ended this movement within a few months, unfortunately. But through the years, Owen's philosophies are still held by many who are in these conditions. And then lastly, I have an excerpt from Robert Owen's address to the inhabitants of New Lanark. What ideas individuals may attach to the term millennium, I know not. But I know that society may be formed so as to exist without crime, without poverty, with health greatly improved, with little if any misery, and with intelligence and happiness increased a hundredfold. And no obstacles whatsoever in intervenes at this moment, except ignorance to prevent such a state of society from becoming universal. This quote not only encaptures everything that Robert Owen stood for in his utopian socialism, but also displayed that he was optimistic about the society and how he and how he knew that not only was it good for the people, but it was good for the entire community as well, um, which made him so successful in his run. Um, also a little tidbit about New Lanark is that it is actually still open to the public today as a tourist attraction. And many people go there to go see what the society was really like when it first started with Robert Owen. 
And here's my bibliography. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed.